Imagine for a second that you are in the early 80s and you went on vacation to Puerto Rico. After a nice vacation there, you are about to go to your next destination, the Virgin Islands. But when you go to the airport, you find out that your flight was cancelled and this nice airline didn't offer you any alternative plan. You're obviously not very happy. But then a 30-something British guy comes up to you and tells you that he found an airplane and he offers you exactly the same flight that was cancelled for $39. Would you be surprised? Well, that happened in reality and this British guy is none other than Richard Branson and that is how he got the idea to create Virgin Atlantic. Back then, Richard Branson, a then relatively successful entrepreneur, he had already started Virgin Records, was stuck in Puerto Rico and his flight was just cancelled and that was really bad because he really wanted to meet his girlfriend very badly and being an entrepreneur, he got an idea. He just found an airplane and then he took a blackboard and put it in the airport and he wrote on the blackboard that he was selling flight tickets to the Virgin Islands for 39 bucks. He sold all the tickets very fast and that was the first flight of Virgin Atlantic. <laughs> the first flight of Virgin Atlantic was to the Virgin Islands. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I find a lot of things funny. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to see the rise and fall of Virgin Atlantic, one of the biggest business ventures of Sir Richard Branson. Let's dive in. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button down there and activate the notification bell to never miss a new video. And again, yes, I am wearing a Hawaiian shirt. What is the reason this time? Well, because it's a very beautiful day today and I wanted to have some summer vibes. Coming back to Virgin Atlantic, the story I said earlier is a true story. That is how the idea of Virgin Atlantic was born, because of a cancelled flight. That was made possible because Richard Branson rented an airplane for this whole flight and he rented that airplane with his credit card and he was really, really scared that his credit card was going to bounce. But he made this flight. He made this flight because he wanted to meet his girlfriend very badly and also because he wanted to help all those people that were stranded in Puerto Rico. And after the flight, one of the passengers went to Richard Branson and he told him that with a little better service, he could be in the airline business. And it is at that moment that Richard Branson got the idea of creating Virgin Atlantic. But wait a minute, let's put the airline industry back in its context in the early 1980s. In the 1980s, the days of glamorous flights with top-notch services and supermodel flight attendants were long gone. We were not in the 1950s anymore. Air travel went from being a luxury service reserved for the elite to be a commodity accessible to anybody. The many innovations in the aviation industry, such as the jet engine and the jumbo jet, made it possible to put more and more passengers in only one aircraft, thus reducing the cost and making it affordable for pretty much everybody. In the 1980s, airlines just took their passenger from A to B without any service. As Richard Branson himself said it, they didn't give a shit. As a consequence, Airlines had a very negative image among the general public and nobody liked the experience of flying. There simply was no entertainment and ugly food. To make matters even worse, most airlines in the world were not even profitable. As I said previously, it was a very commoditized business, so as a result, the pricing was very cutthroat. Airlines also have very high fixed costs. It costs a lot of money to buy the airplanes and do the maintenance. They also have high variable costs. It costs them a lot of money to put one single passenger into the airplane. Finally, airlines are very sensitive to external circumstances, such as the price of oil, economic stability, political stability, the weather, natural disaster, and the list goes on and on. But Richard Branson decided to change all of that. He decided that he was going to create the first profitable airline and that he was going to offer a real service to his passengers to make flying fun. Not simply taking the passengers from A to B, but offering a real experience. And he did it. In 1984, Richard Branson incorporated Virgin Atlantic and he leased his first airplane. Leasing an airplane means that they are kind of renting the airplane instead of buying the airplane. 
Richard Branson leased a Boeing 747-200 that was previously used by Aerolíneas Argentinas. He offered a joyful experience, full of colors and entertaining, and with happy and smiling flight attendants. And also for first class, Virgin Atlantic offered a very nice experience for first class travelers compared to the other airlines. Back then, the other airlines simply offered extra leg room for first class, but Virgin Atlantic really went the extra mile with a full service. He offered flying as an experience. And did it really work? Were passengers going to trust an airline they never heard about with only one airplane instead of trusting the well-established big brand names? Oh yes. Virgin Atlantic was profitable in the first 12 months of operations, something that was completely unheard of. Because remember, most airlines back then, and still today, are never profitable. Facing such a success, Richard Branson leased a second Boeing 747-200. And then, another airplane. And another one. And another one. Pretty fast, he built a big fleet of airplanes, and people loved flying with Virgin Atlantic. Virgin Atlantic made plenty of innovations, such as backseat screens for everybody, lounges in the airport, or bars, mini bars to be precise, inside the airplanes. Many things that are considered to be staples nowadays in the airline industry, but many of them were created and innovated by Virgin Atlantic. The traditional airlines were trying to catch up every time with the newest innovation, but Virgin Atlantic would just come up with another innovation. There was nothing to do. Virgin Atlantic were just the best and they were so fast at innovating. And they also had the usual provocative marketing. For example, the seatback screens, they marketed them as 9 inches of pleasure, if you see what I mean. Virgin Atlantic was so successful that British Airways, the big British company, was feeling threatened. They engaged in what would later be called the War of Dirty Tricks. They really did everything they could to sabotage the flight experience at Virgin Atlantic. Just to give you one example, they would call the passengers of Virgin Atlantic to tell them that the flight was cancelled, even though it was completely wrong, of course. And as you can imagine, all those practices were completely illegal. And if you want to know more about the War of Dirty Tricks, check out that video. It is really well made and explains in detail the War of Dirty Tricks. Anyways, Richard Branson sued British Airways for this war of dirty tricks and he won at the court. After that, all throughout the 90s and the 2000s, Virgin Atlantic continued to expand and to offer great services for its passengers. But entering into the 2010 decade, things started to get difficult for Virgin Atlantic because they started having competition. Other airlines with similar offers enter into the game, such as Qatar Airways or Emirates, who are offering very nice experiences and premium experiences for attractive prices. Up until then, Virgin Atlantic was pretty much alone in this segment, but suddenly all those airlines from the Middle East appeared and offered this great service. And then, in 2020, COVID happened, bringing a massive blow in the face to the entire airline industry, and Virgin Atlantic was no exception. The airline had to fire a lot of its employees and also had to file for bankruptcy to restructure its debt. And they also had to retire quite a lot of airplanes. And in particular, they had to retire the Boeing 747s. They had to retire this gorgeous airplane that made their success back in the 1980s. And even though holiday travel went back to its level before the pandemic, the price of oil, well, it is much, much bigger than before the pandemic. And also, since it is completely impossible to fly above Russia, Belarus and Ukraine, it makes all the operations much more difficult, especially starting from Britain and going to Asia. They have to do big diversions that, as you can imagine, cost a lot of money. But despite all those problems, Virgin Atlantic keeps innovating, trying to improve even a little bit the experience of the travelers. For example, they just inaugurated the booth that is, well, a booth in the airplane that gives this cool bar or restaurant vibe inside the airplane. But still, the numbers are still complicated for Virgin Atlantic and they have been losing money for quite a few years already. All that goes to say that the future of Virgin Atlantic is uncertain, to say the least. But there is one lesson that I think is very important to remember in this whole Virgin Atlantic story. 
It is a lesson about business and entrepreneurship. Number one, no market is saturated. This is a big myth when a new product comes out or anything. People will say, oh no, this market is completely saturated. Well, it doesn't matter. There are no saturated markets. You can enter into any market and make a dent and even dominate that market. Nike is a good example and Virgin Atlantic is a good example. They could enter, make a dent and then dominate a market that was at that moment dominated by big companies that were even subsidized by the governments. Virgin Atlantic was more appreciated by the passengers and more profitable than British Airways and they started from nothing in the 1980s when British Airways was already well established. So that goes to show you that no market is saturated. And number two, if you want to come up with a new product or service, it can be very simple. You can just take an existing service or product and just improve it. You don't need to reinvent the wheel or reinvent the internet. You can just take an existing product or service and make it better. Again, Virgin Atlantic is a perfect example of that. Richard Branson simply took a service, the airlines, he looked at it, he saw the pains, the existing pains of the customers of the airlines and he addressed those pains and made the airlines better. At the end of the day, that is the story of Virgin Atlantic. Simply Richard Branson took an existing airline, thought different and made it better and created Virgin Atlantic. That was it for this video about Virgin Atlantic. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If that is the case, a little thumbs up is always appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to watch the video about Richard Branson, but the time he failed big with Virgin Cola, check out this video. And if you want to find out how Nicolas Cage lost $150 million, check out this other video. And I will see you soon.